A lot of people recognize me as a coach, a mentor, an author, and a speaker, but not many people know that I've spent over 20 years in financial services across commercial banking, private banking, wealth management, financial advisory, and also built my own wealth management firm. And in those 20 plus years of talking to literally thousands of people about money and having lots of multimillionaires as clients, I've learned some really amazing insights around money. And one of those amazing insights that I've learned is that it can take a long time to create sustainable financial wealth, but it takes such a short time to lose it. And that's why you can't afford to be casual about wealth creation and securing your financial future. In this video, I just want to give you some ideas around what are the types of things you need to be prioritizing when you're financial planning and you're under the age of 30. The fact is, if you're under the age of 30, time is your greatest asset. But time is not going to automatically create wealth for you unless you make the right types of decisions. So one of the first things that you want to do is you want to avoid overspending on lifestyle. When you're young, the temptation to go out, socialize, have the best handbags, the best shoes, the best clothes, the best sunglasses is extremely high. And I understand that. The fact is that the more your percentage of your income is going towards lifestyle spending, the less you're saving and the less is going to be left over for you to be able to put towards your future. If you can set the habit right from the outset to live on 60 or 70% of your income, you are going to outperform a lot of people because majority of people either spend everything that they make or they end up spending more than they make and getting into bad debt. The second thing that you can do is you're probably going to need to borrow money to get into your own home. It's very hard for people to save enough of money to be able to buy a house outright. In most cases, they'll need to save a sizable amount for a deposit and then secure a bank loan. That's not a bad thing. However, you want to keep your home loan to a certain amount. Now, if you're a couple, you probably want to have it limit to about two and a half times your annual household income. Certainly not more than that. A lot of people don't have any kind of upper limit to how much money they borrow. And what ends up happening is they end up over borrowing and then they find that there is literally no money after lifestyle and living costs for them to be able to put money aside for the future. The third thing you want to do is you want to continue to invest in your skills and mindset. You want to get into the habit of continually educating yourself because education doesn't stop just because you've done university. In fact, you'll find that most of what you need to know to be successful in life and to have the lifestyle that you want is not going to be covered in the education system. Therefore, you're going to need to get into the habit of continually developing yourself personally and professionally. The fourth thing is spend about 30 minutes a day on researching finance. Finance is not a, a straightforward subject. It's very counterintuitive, which is why a lot of people are unable to accumulate the financial wealth that they would like. By constantly reading some material, at least five days a week, if you spend 30 minutes reading some financial material, what you're doing is you're building your commercial and financial acumen, which is going to result in you making better decisions and avoiding doing the types of things that lose people money or erode their potential for wealth. The next thing is to take out some insurances. Now, one of the most important insurances that you'll ever take out is insuring your income because all the wealth that you create from this point on as a young person, underpinning that is the requirement for you to continually produce an income. So if you can insure your income, then that is really necessary. You may also have a car or a motor vehicle. You want to insure that. And if you have a house, you want to make sure that that's insured properly as well. Of course, if you have dependents and you have debt, you may also wish to look at life insurance. But having some money allocated towards insurance is really important. Now, it is quite possible that nothing bad may happen to you. That is possible. But what if it does? You don't want to find yourself in a position where you're starting to work and accumulating some assets and wealth and then something bad happens and then all of a sudden you are left with no choice but to start selling everything that you have accumulated. Remember what I said, it takes years and decades to accumulate wealth, but it takes weeks or months to actually lose it. The next thing you want to do is to save some money. Now, if you're a young person and you are in a very stable industry, you may still want to save about six months worth of your income 
in short-term savings. The reason is, if an emergency were to happen, you don't want to get into debt and you certainly don't want to start selling off your investments and assets that you may have created for yourself. So have about six months as a minimum. And if you're in a very volatile industry that is going through a significant change or a downturn, you may want to have at least 12 months worth of money, of income in a savings account before you invest. And then lastly, have some sort of an investment plan, a regular investment plan where money is automatically debited either through a systematic investment plan or a dollar cost average, you continue to put money into a high quality diversified investment on a monthly basis. And you, what you want to do is you want to get accustomed to living on 60 or 70% of your income by making sure that these things are taken care of right from the outset. Once you get into the habit of living on 100% of your income, it is very hard to then make provisions for these things. And that's why if you can develop the habit early on, you will find that in 10 or 20 years from now, your financial position may be a lot stronger than your friends and colleagues.